I have today ordered to Vietnam the Air Mobile Division. From seven I graduated high school in 1964 when I went to college. It was still early in the Vietnam War. Additional forces will be needed later, and they will be sent as requested. And I was drafted in the summer of 67. I went down for infantry training, and on the last day, out on the company street, the first sergeant came out and he said, good news and bad news, everybody gets 30 days leave, and then you go to Vietnam, except, and he called about six people, and I was the last, T for Todd, I was last, and I uh, went to flight school. As a gunship pilot, we could save the bacon of the infantry. Most of the time, we could bring in pretty good firepower. So that always felt good to be able to not only uh, defeat the enemy, but to pull our American infantrymen out of, out of uh, trouble. Remember, I, I would have been down there had I not gone to flight school. The day that I was injured turned out to be one of our biggest contacts. And after we hit the first machine gun, we went in lower, uh, right down to treetop level. And that machine gun tore me up pretty bad. The aircraft had about 30 hits. Luckily, not the engine, luckily, not the transmission. Luckily not the co-pilot, uh, my other pilot, and, but one bullet hit me pretty much across the face. And I was conscious for a minute, I heard the other pilot say that I bought the farm. About all I thought about is uh, they cheated today, they brought in an extra machine gun. And I remember waking up the hospital in Saigon, uh, wondering what was the matter. Then I went to Japan for about six, six, seven weeks and Walter Reed Hospital for a year. My cousin did tell me that he had been injured in the war and told me a little bit about, um, you know, why he was in Washington, D.C. So when I met him, I, I was aware that he had been injured, um, but it didn't seem to bother him at all. He didn't make any apologies for it and it it just didn't seem to be in his focus at all. We probably got engaged after about six dates, uh, much to the dismay of my mother and father, but I knew he was somebody who was going someplace and wanted to do something important. I was accepted at Harvard, uh, but we decided not to go there. Uh, we chose Georgetown. He wanted me to be a lawyer as much as he wanted himself to be a lawyer. And so wherever he was going, I was going as an equal partner. John was one of the individuals responsible for petting what would ultimately become the legislation that would lead to 38 U.S.C. 1318, uh, which is the uh, provision of the law that uh, allows uh, surviving spouses of 100% disabled veterans uh, to acquire death indemnity compensation or DIC benefits. DIC provides the means for families to continue to be viable subsequent to the death of the veteran who quite often uh, is the sole provider for that family. I would say that I worked for a year and a half on that research to get the argument that a rebuttable presumption is what we needed. He used at the time what was left of his eyesight to hammer out on an old Selectric typewriter uh, what would ultimately become uh, 38 USC 1318, which provides that very benefit today. I, it actually was a DAV case. Doug Wells told me about it. The VA was still denying Pete some of the people this. And a federal court wrote an opinion and echoed my arguments. I said, this is exactly what it's for. You're supposed to give what was an orphan, a permanently and totally disabled veteran, a presumption of service connection. And so the DAV won that case, having to go to court to have the court interpret 
the law as I have typed it up. I feel good about that. We came back to Michigan. We both passed the bar. And I began teaching. I thought I would just try it. I found out the first semester in the classroom that this was my niche. Young people who come into his classroom are kind of initially struck by his disability because they recognize that he can't see very well and yet his wealth of knowledge, how he communicates that to them, and how over the course of a semester he cares for them individually. I can speak firsthand that his students respect him, um, look up to him, and honor him uh, completely. He doesn't let others give up and he doesn't give up on others either when he sees potential. He has this uh, uncanny ability to bring out greatness in everybody, um, even when you don't see greatness in yourself. Four years ago, I got involved with the DAV, and I found that these guys uh, just didn't sit around. They actually helped that. So I uh, got involved at Chapter 19. I was involved in finding, and uh, I did the legal work when we bought a new building. I actually did some construction work at the building won a lawsuit for the chapter. Uh, I watched John uh, during the build and the doing of this chapter. Uh, actually, a blind person running a chop saw, framing in a door, and the cuts were perfect. He sets such a, uh, an example for, for individuals that have disabilities, and quite frankly, uh, for people that, that are able. If you're going to be with John, you're going to have to uh, accept that there are going to be things you have to do. Uh, I mean, you can't say I can't because look over and John's doing it. When you think of John, uh, you think of somebody who's been disfigured, who's lost most of his sight and uh, how they could be bitter. And, and they speak always of sacrifice. He's never said that word. In the 40 years that we've been married, I have never heard John say, I can't. He inspires others uh, by the way with which he almost seems to overcome uh, any limitations imposed upon him by his service-connected disabilities with relative ease. It's one of the things that makes John so unique. Uh, I, I can see replacing a leg and learning how to walk again. But being such a functional individual with such limited eyesight is just amazing. I think the world of him. Uh, he is, you know, hands down one of the most influential people I've ever met in my life. He counts his blessings uh, every day and he doesn't look at the bad things that have happened to him in life. He focuses on the good things. He's an inspiration for, for youth and, and others. Uh, for what he's accomplished. Um, he's just a great American. I, I just think he's very deserving of it. it. It would be my image of an outstanding uh, disabled uh, vet.